Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Adobe Lightroom project, we'll be using color grading techniques to improve a photograph and push the colors the direction that we want them to go. Here's our before, kind of washed out, faded. Here's our after. I'm going to show you these side by side. There you go, before and after. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and, of course, share it with your friends. Also hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you want to learn a lot more about Adobe Lightroom, take a look at my complete training course and you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Let's just get back to the original picture here. I'll go back here to full size. There we go. And hit the reset button. Clean all that up. So there it is. There's the original picture. As you can see, it's rather washed out. The colors are kind of indifferent. They're kind of really mid-tone. It looks like it wants to go more warm, but there's a lot of bluish tones in here as well. So we can improve all this stuff. Now we'll be using two tools primarily in here. The first off will be the basic up here, which we'll use to get our basic exposure settings about where we want them. We'll then come down and use the HSL color section right here, actually the HSL side of this, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. We'll use that to adjust our colors. Now with the HSL or color up here, two different ways of looking at the same thing. With the HSL or hue, saturation, luminance, or we can have them showing everything which I'm doing right now, all. We're looking at the hue with slider controls for all of our colors. And then we then look at saturation and slider controls from all of our colors. And we then look at luminance with slider controls again for all of our colors. The color option here just flips that. It gives you the colors as individual colors and then the hue, saturation, and luminance for each individual color. I found that this is a bit more difficult to work with. Just you know, just thinking it through logically, it just makes a bit more sense to separate out the hue, saturation, and luminance together and work on each one of those separately instead of trying to do each individual color separately. So just two different ways of doing the exact same thing that we have going on up here. Okay, let's go up to the basic, and we'll start off by improving the values here in our image. I'll scroll down just a little bit. I won't bother with the auto. It normally doesn't give me anything which I want, so I just leave that one alone. You can go ahead and give it a try if you want to. You can also go up here and go for a white balance, but I'm going to leave the white balance alone on this. Obviously, this shirt should be white, and I could use that, but I don't really care about an exact white balance to start off with. I'll just leave it as is. So let's just come down just a little bit here. What I do care about are my highlights, shadows, blacks, and whites, and the presence, and we'll just use the clarity on that one. I'll start off with the highlights. It's our top option up here. Notice if I go to the right side, I get, they get whiter and whiter. Go to the left, I get actually more color in there. And what I want is more color in the picture. So I'll push this over to the left-hand side. Now what I used, the number I used in my sample there was 50. So I'll just type that. And you can type in exact numbers just by double-clicking in that number area and type in your number. Okay, on the shadow side, I also want to darken down my shadows. So I'll push this towards the left so that as it goes darker, I get more contrast in there. Clear to the left, all the way to the left is 100. That's a long ways to go, but it's a real washed out picture. So I'm going to leave it all the way to the left at 100. We then can adjust our whites and our blacks. These are the ends, of course, of your values. If we push the whites to the top, it kind of adds or brightens the whole picture up, as you can see. So I added in more color by bringing the highlights down and then pushing those lighter again, and this helps to bring in more contrast on the light side of things. And I'll push it up to oh, about 24 or so in here. And then on the blacks to darken the darks down and again add more contrast, you go to the left hand side on this one. Right is less contrast, left is more contrast. So further towards the black and then whites further towards the whites. And on the blacks, I'll bring it down about the same amount, about oh, 20, 21 in there somewhere. That just adds in a bit of contrast in here for us. Now finally, down here on presence, we can brighten things up a bit here. And I'll just use the top control here, the clarity. And if we move that to the right side, it actually kind of 
increases all of those values, all the color values in there, brings back in some color for us. And I'll set that for about 60, 62, that looks pretty good. So I've added in a lot of contrast. So it really helps a picture already just by doing some basic adjustments in here with value and contrast. Let's now work on the color part of this. That's actually the color grading part of this whole option. Color, of course, is going to be improving the color. The grading is because I'll be pushing colors in a certain direction. What I want here is actually to warm the picture up, but subtly, but just you know, add in a bit more warmth to this overall picture. If you notice on the right side over here, we're set at the HSL or the hue saturation luminance and I have it set at all so we're seeing all of our controls there's the hue right down below that there's the saturation and below that there is the luminance and this is the order that I like working with these I like to work the hue first then the saturation then the luminance so we'll start off with the hue now you can come in here and decide which one you want to adjust just grab a control and move it left or right like that and you can control things notice the red really is only impacting her neck in here just a little bit there on the neck real real red or very little on that I'm gonna set this at zero again reset that to zero now it's a little bit tricky sometimes to know exactly what the right slider is to use on different parts of your picture so there's a real neat little tool right there little thing this little dot right there it says adjust hue by dragging in the photo now, this is a real cool technique if you click on that so you now see those little arrows above and below that I can now move my cursor over the picture now this is the good part about this if I just move this around I'm not doing anything I'm just moving it around watch the hue over here as I move it around it highlights different colored sections so I can actually see which is the correct color slider to use for different parts of the picture so it takes out the guesswork say I wanted to work on what's in here I can see this is kind of right in between the yellows and the oranges in there that's the right color slider to use to control that okay let's start off with the sky up here it's awfully yellow as you can see now, if I click and pull down it moves that to the left which moves it more towards the red you can see on the control here yellow gets pushed more towards red or more towards green one or the other on the green it's more towards yellow or more towards blue so it takes the two colors that create that color in the middle and you can push it one way or the other on that so just click and drag I can go a lot more red or push up a lot more green what I want is to push more towards the reds or towards the left so I'll go to the left here maybe about about oh negative 40 looks pretty good so I've put in a lot of red into that yellow now in here the background trees back there these are predominantly blue as you can see again over here on the as I move my slider around I'm on top of those those are predominantly blue so I'll click and drag if I pull up I can move that blue more towards the red side or towards the purple side and that warms the blues up let's just find a good spot for that not too much if I go too blue it goes kind of weird green if I go up towards the reds and as it goes more warmer on that and I'll bring it up just a bit again I'm just clicking and dragging you don't see the cursor as I'm dragging on that it disappears so if you see the cursor in here that means that it's not being pressed and if I press down with the mouse button it disappears and then you drag it on the yellows again so it disappears while I'm dragging and then when I let go it comes back again so if it disappears that means that I'm actually holding down the mouse button at that point. Let me just put that back to the 40 that I liked. There we go. So that gets the skies warmer. We've warmed up the blues a little bit in here. Now up in here there's some looks like magenta right in here and a bit of purple right up in here. I want to warm these up a little bit as well. I'll start with the purples right there. Kind of the, the shadow part of her face. I'll click and drag here if I go up it gets warmer if I go down it gets cooler I want this warmer so I'll just push it up a little bit until it looks nice maybe oh about about there so I've added in some more warmth into that and then into the magentas right in here again as I move it around see it comes into magenta right there same thing I'm going to warm these up so I'll click and push up on that 
Notice also it's moving the reds up as well. So it will be adjusting your position as you move depending upon where where your controls. If you move into a red zone, it's going to move up on that red as well. So to get around that little problem, I don't, really don't want to be adjusting my reds. I want to just be adjusting the magentas. I'm just going to do that by hand over here. And I'll just slide control this just a little bit you know, close to what I did on the purples. So I've warmed up the purples and the magentas in there. So that warms that up. All right, that takes care of the hues. I've pushed the colors basically the way I want them. We can now adjust the saturation of the colors and the luminance of the overall picture. So let's go ahead and move down our saturation level. We're we'll working with the same basic colors. We'll be bringing up our oranges and yellows in here and bringing down the saturation of the blues. Notice that my control is still working in here. Let's just click down on this next little dot there. This allows you to adjust saturation. Again, just click and drag, and you can adjust the saturation for that particular color selection. Now, I want to really push that yellow, so I'll just keep on pushing that up. You get a lot of yellow in here, maybe up around 70 or so. So there's 69. A lot of yellow really pushing out. We're beginning to get some banding in here on the yellow, which I think is kind of interesting. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that in there. I'm not going to bother with adjusting that out. Like, I like that look, that kind of extra super yellow in there. Now we know that down here is our orange range somewhere. It's right in there. You can kind of see that orange. There it is right there. There's our orange control. And I guess I know that orange was down in here. I'm going to do this one just by hand over here on the right hand side. So it's kind of hard to find that exact orange spot. But again, I can see that there is orange here as I roll it around. It kind of bounces between orange and yellow. So since I know orange is in there, let's bring our orange up a ways as well. Just kind of warm the picture up. I don't need too much in here. About 49 adds in more warm, more glow in there. Let's now bring down the blues. They're too saturated. I want to have it mostly a warm tone. So let's bring down that blue range in there. Same thing, I can use this to see where that color is, what that color is, and then click and drag in there to adjust the color. Or, since I know what that is, it's blues, I can go over here to the blue slider control and just move this to the left and bring down those blues a bit. Notice I got, so bring them down, they kind of fade into the background a bit in there. So let's find a nice spot for that, just, just fade out so I'm just losing the blues. And it looks like, oh, just the low 30s looks pretty good on that so that kind of helps to push that back into the background again. All right now the last thing I want to do is come down to our luminance level. Again you can click on this little icon here and then directly adjust the luminance by clicking and dragging or you don't have to use those just uncheck that and you can then just adjust it right here. And I just want to bring a bit more luminance in here on the yellows so I'll bring that up just a bit. You see how that brightens up that whole yellow thing. It goes more towards white as I go clear to the side. That's more of a naturalistic look, but I don't want that. I want just a little bit more brightness in the yellow side. Just kind of balance things out. And I think about a plus seven or so looks real nice. So there we go. We've used these slider controls in here a couple of ways to adjust all of the different colors in the direction that we want to get the feel that we want to have. And that's really what the color grading is all about, is to push your colors in the way that you want them to go to get the kind of color feel that you're looking for. This because I wanted to warm things up and really push it more towards the yellows. Let's now see how we did. I'll come down here, click on our before and after. There's the before and there's the after. Okay, so that's how you can use the HSL setting or the hue, saturation, and luminance settings to color grade your photograph. Don't forget to check out my complete training for Adobe's Lightroom program and you'll find the link for that right down there in the description. That will help me keep this channel going. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.